In the Barstow Community College District, people are our most valuable resource. Trustees and administrators who lead, faculty who inspire and teach, staff, mentors and community members who support, and students who inquire and learn. Each of the achievements and accomplishments that I'm gonna give myself about 10 to 20 seconds to discuss in this speech have involved months and sometimes even years of work on the part of these people. Thank you all for your dedication and commitment to Barstow Community College District. A college education provides much more than the knowledge acquired in the various subjects studied. In this quickly changing world, one of the biggest benefits of a college education is the training given on how to acquire new knowledge. At BCC, we teach our students how to learn, how to explore, and how to invent. So, how valuable is this higher education that we promote? What effect will our talents and skills have on the world around us? How do we create fundamental change? What are the problems that we are trying to solve and who or what can solve them? These are important questions, especially as we talk about the state of the college in Barstow. Let's consider these questions with some familiar faces. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. As someone who's done what you're about to go and do, I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. You can't really create fundamental change in someone's life uh, unless you change the way they think about their lives. So we would have uh, some, a number of problems, but not a large number. You know, I think you could pick maybe a dozen or so and the progress we make on those would uh, uh, determine the improvement in the human condition uh, almost entirely. And most of the other uh, issues would not have uh, nearly that kind of effect. So what we want is we want all sorts of innovation and energy, excitement, talent uh, focused on, on these uh, problems. Does Jim Carrey's humor affect our world? What impact will our comedians, actors, poets, artists, songwriters, and performers have on the future? The annual art show in our Learning Resource Center this spring highlighted some absolutely amazing student talent. I'm also impressed by the dedicated and inspired musicians in our bands and choir. Our performing arts students have produced theatrical productions, musical performances, and events that have contributed to the social and cultural climate in our community. What effect will these talented people have on our world? And what about our student athletes? Our men's basketball team was the Viking Scholar Team of the Year with a combined GPA of 3.65 and two of our players achieving a perfect 4.0. All of our sophomores who participated in men's basketball and baseball transferred to four-year institutions this year. What effect will they have on our world? And how about our liberal studies, math and science, social science, business, and career technical training? Will our efforts in these areas make an impact? Oprah Winfrey brought up an important point. Can we as educators affect the way people think about their lives? Our student services personnel help our students change the way they think about their lives every day. Bill Gates suggested we need all sorts of innovation, energy, excitement, and talent to solve the world's problems. BCC is an important source of that innovation, energy, excitement, and talent. Malcolm X observed, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. And Audrey Hepburn said, a quality education has the power to transform societies in a single generation, provide children with the protection they need from hazards of poverty, labor exploitation, and disease, and give them the knowledge, skills, and confidence to reach their full potential. We serve a large community in the high desert of San Bernardino County. 
The diverse people in our district can be illustrated by ethnicity, race, language, religion, income, our rural designation, and our juxtaposition between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Approximately half of our population is learning English as a second language. We have a higher than average unemployment and poverty rates in our district. The percentage of our residents who are enrolled in higher education is 40% less than the state average. These indicators demonstrate that we have the potential to make an amazing impact in our community. I'm proud to recognize our partners in facing these challenges, who believe with us that education is key to our community's future success. Our Barstow City Mayor, Julie Hackbarth McIntyre, is also the president of our Barstow Community College Foundation. I appreciate Mayor Julie, our city council, Kurt Mitchell, our city manager, and other city leaders who demonstrate this continual support for our college. The commanders and leaders at Fort Irwin and the Marine Corps Logistics Base are also vital partners. We are proud to serve our active duty military and our veterans at this campus and through our satellite locations. Local business and our Chamber of Commerce have also been actively engaged. Many of these business and industry partners serve in an advisory capacity for our CTE and other programs. Our faith-based community leaders are also great supporters of higher education in our community. One good example is Pastor Charles Maddox, president of the Barstow Christian Ministerial Association, who also serves as vice president of our foundation. The superintendents of our feeder K-12 districts, Jill Kemach, Jeff Malin, Rhonda Tremblay, and Peter Wright, and the principals and faculty at our local schools are working to provide a solid education for our children. Do they have an impact on the future success of these children in college? You bet they do. According to the state student success scorecard, about 70% of students who are prepared for college when they enter will graduate, receive a certificate, or transfer to a four-year college or university, while only 40% of those who enter underprepared will achieve that success. And our own statistics mirror these findings. BCCD is dedicated to strong partnerships with our K-12 districts. Over the past couple of years, we have worked together to implement dinner and dialogue meetings, curriculum alignment discussions, CTE pathways, and student success and equity projects, such as the Summer Bridge Program. This year, we are working together with Cal State University San Bernardino to implement a high desert teacher preparation cohort. This program will provide an opportunity for paraprofessionals to become teachers in our local districts. As we work together, our students develop the spiritual, physical, and mental capacity they need to succeed. As a superintendent president of Barstow Community College District, and on behalf of our board of trustees, I thank all of our community partners for your engagement and contributions, your trust and support, and I commit to our continued relationship with you as we focus on the success of our students. So, let's talk about our students. We anticipate more than 5,000 students enrolling in our college courses this year. Approximately half of the classes will be conducted online, and the other half will take place on campus here or at our satellite campuses at State Street and Fort Irwin. In the 2014-15 school year, the college dispersed close to $8 million in state and federal financial aid funds to help our students. $44,750 in scholarship was also awarded from our foundation and other supporters. During our commencement exercise in May of this year, we awarded 359 associate's degrees and 20 certificates. We had 35 students graduate summa cum laude, 47 magna cum laude, and 61 receive cum laude honors. Our associated student government works hard every year under the guidance of their administrative and faculty advisors to provide opportunities for student engagement beyond the classroom. Through the many clubs and organizations, they provide monthly services, activities and events, 
and participate in regional, state, and local leadership trainings. This year, we welcome Nathan Cullum, our student trustee, and Wayne Brown, our ASG president. Over the past year, our students have received many honors. Austin Ciboli was nominated to the All-USA Academic Team of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Sean White was recognized as VCC Student of the Year by the Barstow Area Chamber of Commerce. Kyle Silva won Academic All-State Basketball Team Honors, and as you see on the screen, many of our student athletes were chosen as all-conference players. Our student successes are a direct result of the hard work, dedication, and scholarship of our faculty, management, and staff. BCCD employs 221 people, including full and part-time, and 64 of these have been with the district for more than 10 years, five more than 20 years, and another three have served for more than 30 years. The Classified School Employee Association recognized Maureen Davis as the 2015 Employee of the Year. And the recipient of this year's Don White Award for Teaching Excellence is, gonna be announced later, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I also wanna recognize Barbara Rose, who serves as our president of the CSEA chapter, Louis Goldstein for his continuing service as president of our Barstow Community College Faculty Association, and Scott, Scott Bulkley, who is serving as our Academic Senate President this year. Our faculty is to be congratulated for their work on the approval of nine associate degrees for transfer, ADTs. These degrees facilitate the transfer to all California State Universities, are accepted nationally by the historically black colleges, and give our students guaranteed acceptance and priority for admissions at Cal State San Bernardino. This year we will continue our efforts to develop additional ADTs and to receive Chancellor's Office approval for our transfer certificate to the University of California. Another important part of our mission is to serve the workforce needs of our community through the college's Career Technical Education Department. CTE programs include four credit classes and contract education in 40 disciplines. Significant improvements have been made over the past year to our CTE associate degree and certificate programs. Grant funds have been used to purchase new equipment for several programs including automotive and diesel technology, welding, industrial maintenance and technology, and photography. Counselors have begun meeting with our CTE students at our State Street location and in our cosmetology classrooms. A great example of our ability to meet our community needs through contract education is our Fort Irwin Diesel Program. Fort Irwin contacted us about providing this program to ensure that our soldiers have a viable trade that can be utilized during and after military service, and we responded. We are now serving our third cohort of soldiers through this program. Many of our CTE faculty have been nominated for scholarships and awards this year for their distinguished service. As you see, our faculty members have the experience and expertise to provide our students the opportunity for an excellent education. Our students can take the degrees and certificates they earn here and enter the workforce or go on to earn advanced degrees anywhere in the world. Five new administrators have joined us this year. Mr. Thomas Armstrong, our Associate Dean of Sur Student Services and Athletics. Dirk Brosma, our Director of CTE Grants TACT. Chris Clark, our Director of Public Relations, Communications and Marketing. Maureen Davis, Budget Analyst. And on August 10th, we welcomed our newest member of the administrative team, Dr. Kushner Dadaboy as our Vice President of Student Services. Yay! <laughs> Stephen was very excited. <laughs> our managers include a great mix of leaders, some of whom have a long history with the college, and those who bring experience from other colleges and business institutions. Although I'm not naming each individually, they provide the leadership in their areas of responsibility that allow us to realize the successes we have 
and will, and will continue to achieve. And speaking of successes, this summer I received an important letter from the Accrediting Commission stating that our accreditation has been reaffirmed. The Commission complimented our efforts and the progress we're making. As you know, one of the issues that we had to address was tying our funding to planning efforts. Next week, you will receive my second annual memo, memo delineating the program review requests that we were able to fund and closing the loop on the 2014-15 allocation cycle. At BCCD, we are committed to a process of continuous improvement. One example of this commitment is our internal assessment of two areas of, the, of, of improvement, data integrity and enrollment management. To help us advance in these areas, we applied for and received an institutional effectiveness grant from the state. This grant includes site visits by a team of experts as well as funding to assist us in implementing the recommendations that we and the team agree should be implemented. It will take a unified effort from all of us to improve our systems from the top down to be successful in these areas. Our trustees and management, faculty and staff and students will need training, new skills, and a positive can-do attitude to make necessary changes. But I am confident that we are up to the challenge. Another way that we strive for continuous improvement is through the President's Leadership Academy. We had 11 amazing participants complete this nine-month course in 2015. As their final project, the group produced a new student recruitment video that is now used in our public outreach and is available through our website and YouTube channel. This group set the bar with their creative documentary style video. I'm looking forward to what the, what the class of 2016 will choose as their final project. As we continue our focus on the future, we don't want to forget our past. To assure that BCD's, BCCD's past is memorialized with the support of our Board of Trustees, we have commissioned one of our adjunct faculty, Catherine Ferrer, who is already a published author, to research and write the story of Barstow Community College District. This history will be published in 10-year increments on our college website over the next 12 months. I've mentioned the Barstow Community College Foundation a couple of times during this address. Its board of directors is comprised entirely of volunteers who give up their time and resources to support this college. They host three annual events each year, the barbecue fundraiser in September, the lights and learning celebration in December, and the scholarship awards luncheon in the spring. Over the past 24 years, the foundation has awarded hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships to our students. I am grateful for their many hours of work and their generous support. The foundation also contributes financial support to the Performing Arts Center. This past March, they helped produce the PAC's grand opening event featuring the Fab Four, which was a terrific success. We have built upon this initial success with more concerts, recitals, and plays. And I understand that auditions will be held shortly for the perfumery play that is scheduled for the middle of November. Our Performing Arts Center is a spectacular building and a versatile venue for our college and community. Stay tuned for more musical events and amazing performances. Walking across campus, you'll notice a new desert landscaping projects that are helping the college and our community save water. The Mojave Water Agency awarded $100,000 to the district for the work we completed last year. And Bev Lowry, who is here today, <laughs> thank you, Bev. The president of the agency's board recently announced the availability of another $173,000 for additional BCCD water conservation projects this year. And if you walk into a couple of buildings, you'll see changes there too. The old IPAC has been transformed into a student success center. And our bookstore is now operated by Follett Higher Education Group. Our Board of Trustees recently approved another construction project on campus. Soon we will be breaking ground on a new solar field 
that will start generating power for our college in January of 2016. This project is expected to pay for itself within seven years and will significantly reduce the cost of energy for our district for 20 or more years to come. Another new building, the Wellness Center, is opening for classes this fall. It provides new classrooms, an indoor track, an amazing sport court, and high quality athletic equipment. A ribbon cutting and grand opening are being planned for this athletic facility on our campus. But we will start teaching classes there in the, on Monday. This new, these new buildings and construction are the direct result of the vision and planning of BCCD's elected Board of Trustees. Marsha Pierce, President, Phil Harris, Vice President, Dr. Ted Baca, Clerk, and members Fred Baca and Tim Hyden. I am grateful for their dedication, their sincere stewardship, and their continued commitment to the Barstow Community College District. The board's vision, mission, and goals guide the governance of this college district. My goals are in harmony with theirs. The strategic planning and communications process of this district ensures that all constituent group voices are heard in our planning and decision making. Let's look at a few of our successes. In 2013-14, after developing this process, we spent a significant amount of time establishing our core values. We also rewrote our mission statement, developed two accreditation reports, and rewrote and revised many board policies and procedures. Last year, many of you participated in our strategic planning retreat, where after looking at data and analyzing information, we set our strategic priorities. This fall, honoring our core values, our shared commitment to each other about how we behave, treat one another, and work collaboratively, we will complete the work on our strategic plan. Through our committees, we will develop goals, objectives, and activities that will allow us to achieve the strategic priorities that we set. We have a clear directive from the state, and based on our own strategic priorities, one that we agree with, that we must increase student access and completion. Remember I said that we will be welcoming over 5,000 students this year, and remember the number who graduated and completed certificates? 359 and 20. We have room to improve. This number of graduates is below where it could be, and this relates to social justice. Given the significant income disparity, an average of nearly $300,000 over a lifetime between those who hold an associate's degree and those with only a high school diploma. BCC can contribute greatly to raising the socioeconomic level of our community by increasing certificate, associate degree, and transfer completers. Today, our faculty will have an opportunity to engage in crucial conversations around the theme of culture and diversity with our consultant, Dr. Richard Martinez. And the Student Success and Equity Committee will be providing more opportunities for all of us to continue these critical conversations about student success and social justice throughout the year. We must continue our exploration of ways to address basic skills needs of our students. We must develop clear pathways for our local students to come to BCC after high school. We must provide support needed to ensure that our students successfully achieve their goals. As we address the changes needed and set goals that are in harmony with our new strategic priorities, please consider what you can do to help this college achieve these goals. What changes do you need to make? What skills do you need to develop? I have already started my list and I encourage all of you to do the same. We have had glimpses of our future and it's exciting to consider what tomorrow may bring. Can you imagine? Have any of you ever visited Tomorrowland? You know, that part of Disneyland that has Space Mountain, Autopia, and futuristic exhibits? Walt Disney spoke about Tomorrowland like this. 
The Tomorrowland attractions have been designed to give you an opportunity to participate in adventures that are a living blueprint of our future. Keep that in mind. Tomorrowland, a living blueprint of our future. To create blueprints, we need to have some idea about what we want to build. Remember Bill Gates? He suggested that we take a look at the world's problems and then apply all sorts of innovation, energy, excitement, and talent to solve those problems. This short video by the Boeing Corporation captures the spirit of what we are discussing. While you watch this video, please think about who is really solving the world's problems. We know they're out there. You can't always see them. But it's our job to find them. The answers, the solutions, the innovations, all waiting to help us build something better, something more amazing. A safer, cleaner, brighter future. At Boeing, that's what building something better is all about. So who is solving the world's problems? It's the innovators, the dreamers, the people who are asking the questions, the people who want to learn. Who are these people? Our students. Did any of you see the Tomorrowland movie? Did you? Raise your hand if you did. I loved it. Actually, I felt inspired by its message. Just in case you missed it because it wasn't one of Disney's most popular films, let's watch this trailer. With every second that ticks by, the future is running out. Newton? That's not mine. What's not yours? The pen. I've never... <laughs> what if there was a place? Dad, I just need you to look at this. Does it look weird? A secret place. Where nothing was impossible. You're not saying this! Casey, stop it! Go away! <laughs> Did you see the dog? Cool. I want you to take me there. Take you where? Where'd you get this? Who are you, kid? What you saw was a place where the best and the brightest people in the world came together to actually change it. We've been looking for someone like you for a very long time. Of all the people, why me? He thinks you can fix the future. Hang on! The line from the movie that sticks out in my mind is when Hugh Laurie says to George Clooney and Casey Newton, and the girl with the special pen, he thinks you can fix it. Fix what, you might ask? The future. At Barstow Community College, we have the opportunity to educate the innovators, the dreamers, the people who are asking the questions, the people who want to learn. We have a campus where nothing is impossible. If we can conceive it and believe it, we can achieve it. I believe that BCC has great potential. The Accrediting Commission can see it. The trustees know it. The community needs it. We can invent our future. Our students deserve our best efforts. They insist on it. Think of the girl in Tomorrowland, and then think of all of our students asking us to take them there, to teach them how to learn, to explore, and invent. If we accomplish our mission, if we achieve our strategic priorities, if we do our jobs, our students will remember this year. They will remember Barstow Community College as a place where the best and the brightest people came together to actually change their world. Remember the girl in Tomorrowland had a unique pin to see the future. Right now, a new unique pin is being given to each of you. This pin will help you remember 
that we've been looking for someone like you for a very long time. This pen will help us remember that at Barstow Community College, we are inventing our future. My hope is that tomorrow and the next day and the next week and all of the months ahead, this pen will remind us that this college is a launching pad for our students. If you want to see their bright future, hang on. It may be a bumpy ride, but it will be worth it. The state of this college is great, but it will get even better tomorrow. Thank you all for participating in this great adventure.